Hello, my name is Brian Casey. I'm editor-in-chief of AntMini.com, and we're here at the 2013 edition of the Radiological Society of North America meeting in Chicago. We have with us today Dr. David Levin. He is professor and chairman emeritus at the Department of Radiology at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia. Uh, Dr. Levin, thanks for being with us today. My pleasure, Brian. Thank you. So a lot of uh, discussion here at this meeting about where radiology is going. Um, what's the future of radiology? What, what are things going to be like in five years, ten years? How is this especially going to change? Uh, can you share some thoughts on that with us? Yes, I uh, think there, there certainly are a lot of threats out there. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I also think there are a lot of things that we as radiologists have to do. We have to, we have to basically change the way we do business. We have to change our culture. Uh, so, for example, um, I think one of the things that is very Im important for us to do is to offset or refute the notion that some people have that uh, radiology is just a commodity. You know, we've all heard that. Uh, there are a lot of people out there who believe that. Uh, I don't think radiology is a commodity. I don't think most radiologists think it's a commodity, but we have to change the way we're perceived by the outside world. One way we can do that is to act more like consulting physicians. Uh, if radiologists were to act more like consulting physicians, what would they do? Well, number one, they would look at the appropriateness of requests for advanced imaging studies and pass on that, the, their, their uh, evaluation of appropriateness, rather than just going ahead and doing the study. That's basically what we do now. And a request for an imaging test comes in, a CT scan or an MRI, we just go ahead and do it. We don't really think about whether it's appropriate or not. So I think we have to become more proactive in actually looking at the uh, degree of appropriateness of the request and then trying to intercede to prevent inappropriate studies from being done. That's one thing. We have to, I think, also be a little bit more active in supervising the advanced imaging tests that we do. Instead of just letting the techs do the, the study according to you know, a predetermined protocol or a kind of a cookbook approach, we have to actually be more active in supervising the test itself. And then, of course, once the study is done, uh, we have to be better at communicating the results directly to the patient. And we also have to make uh, ourselves more available for consulting with the ordering physician. And we have to do that consultation with the ordering physician not only after the study is done, but even before the study gets done. So we have to become more like consultants. That's one thing. Um, I think another thing that we have to do is we have to take back the nights and weekends. The idea of outsourcing night and weekend work to teleradiology companies to me is absolute anathema. I think we're just shooting ourselves in the foot by doing that. We have to take that back. And you've, you've really been pretty vocal about, uh, about this over the last couple of years and, and it, and it kind of seems like the idea is getting some traction. I hope so. I think it is. I think uh, I see more and more practices taking back their night and weekend work and I would like to think that some of the things I've talked about have had some influence on that. Now, to go back to this idea of being a consulting physician, a physician's physician, um, do you think it's going to be hard for some radiology practices and some radiologists to break out of the mentality, the kind of the bunker mentality of, of you know, they're, they're in a dark room all day, um, they're, they're just, you know, grinding through all the studies. I mean, is it going to be hard to, to, to break that habit? Yes, it is going to be hard to break that habit. And what's, e what's going to be even harder is that we are going to have to sacrifice some income to do that because doing these non-interpretive services like consulting with patients, consulting with physicians, passing on appropriateness, thing, that all of that stuff takes up time. Uh, and by sacrificing the time away from interpreting, we're also going to have to take a, some of, somewhat of a cut in income. I think we have to do that. I think that's, I think a lot of people recognize people, some of the ACR leadership has already proposed doing that. Paul Ellen Bogan, uh, chairman of the board of chancellors has proposed doing that. John Patty, the immediate past chairman of the board, has proposed doing that. Geraldine McGinty, the uh, head of the Economics Commission of the ACR, she has proposed doing that. So a lot of people in leadership 
roles that the ACR have already proposed. We have to do more in the way of uh, uh, acting like consulting physicians at the sacrifice of some degree of income. Now, another thing I'd like to I'd like to mention, uh, talking about you know radiologists being the doctor's doctor, uh, is what I like to call the 90% rule. Now, the 90% rule says that uh, a primary care doctor working together with a radiologist and a clinical lab can solve 90% of the diagnostic problems that come to the attention of that primary care physician. In other words, the primary care doctor doesn't have to refer the patient to a specialist until he makes the diagnosis. And the way he makes that diagnosis is by using his radiologist and by using his clinical lab. Those three things working together can, I believe, make 90% of the diagnoses that come their way. And that might actually end up uh, increase, uh, leading to an increase in the use of diagnostic imaging rather than a decrease. All right, very good. Well, some great comments, some great advice. Thank you for being with us today. My pleasure. All right, signing off for AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.